Welcome, Christian. Thanks very much. I'm glad to be here. I don't know what to call you. Are you a doctor, a scientist, a lawyer? Or... I'm a doctor and a lawyer and a reverend. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask which order those happen? <laughs> well, it was, a, it was a lawyer first, and then I got my Ph.D., uh, and then I, uh, my little sister asked me to perform her wedding ceremony. So I became an online reverend and did that. So reverend doctor, you can call me if you want to, <laughs> you probably don't No, I'm already confused. I have like six jokes. I want to say yeah. <laughs> between six is good. Yeah. Cause just right off the top, if it had went the other way around, that would have been more interesting as in if you became the preacher first and the attorney later, right? Then I had to scratch my head for a second, but let, let, let's get on with it. So, um, you're in town, you're in Nosara, it's your first time here, right? It is, yep. What are you doing here? What's happening? Well, I'm part of a research team that's been invited to come down and, and help Nosara take a look at its values. Uh, I understand there's been some challenges, the community's changing, communities all over the world are changing, uh, for all sorts of reasons, and uh, the time would be now to try to gauge what the people of Nosara value so that when you make plans for the next 20 years, the next 50 years, you can go in strategically or with eyes wide open. There's certain things that you want to retain to make no, to, to keep Nosara as nice as it's always been for people. But you, you can't do those plans properly unless you really take your temperature as a community. And we're just here not to push an agenda, not to try to fix anything for anybody. We're here just to sort of figure out what are the values that Nosarans, Nosareños have in common. That makes sense. And that sounds that sounds great and all. But I mean, why, why should anyone care about this particular moment, this event? Uh, obviously, everyone's included, but I'm just saying, why should anyone care about you and what you're doing in this particular event? Well, the time is now. I, I would say my, my primary answer to that would be that the time is now. 20 years from now is too late. I know that there's been uh, challenges in Nosara recently about the uh, development regulations and um, that's understandable. Those, the, that, that, that kind of question brings in all sorts of issues in the community. But it seems like there's a, there's a general consensus that having a sustainable development plan would be a positive thing for Nosoreños. But what that means is different, different for everybody. So in order to make that kind of step from now to a sustainable development plan to help you guide Nosara into the future, you really have to have a good sense of what Nosoreños care about. This whole exercise is not to tell Nosoreño what's wrong with it, not to tell Nosoreño what to do about fixing whatever problems it thinks it has, but to take the temperature of the community members and say, what are we? What are we? What do we want to be when we grow up? Change is going to happen. You want that change to happen randomly and you want to become Tamarindo. You want to become some other beach town across the world where, where things get away from you or you want to guide that. Uh, and I think if you have the right the right process and the right approach, you can help steer that ship rather than just let it bob on the water by itself. I got you. So when we first talked and Dr. Tina was on, she used the term watershed moment. Um, it sounds like you're kind of coming from the same spot. Can, can you walk us through it? Why, why you guys are referencing it? Cause it seems to me that's kind of the answer as to why you're here. You feel we're at a very unique moment in time and that's why you keep saying now's the time, now's the time. Mm -hmm. But again, someone walking around through their day to day, wasn't walking around necessarily thinking that they might kind of intrinsically know it, but they might, mm -hmm. they're not scientists or doctors who do this for a living. So, right. um, walk us through that a little bit. Well, it seems to me having only been here just for a few days that the greatest asset that Nosara has is its quality of life. But qual what is quality of life? Quality of life is it's comprised of a number of things. It includes nature. It includes good schools. It includes jobs where you can pay your bills and feed your family. Uh, there's a number of it, it includes uh, a good police presence, good water treatment. Um, quality of life is comprised of a whole number of things. And so the watershed moment would be to try to figure out how all of those things can be brought together to maintain the quality of life. Because if you don't do that, you only have to walk down one street in Osara to see that change isn't coming. Change is here. There's a, the, the wolf is at the door now. And so 20 years from now will be too late to try to create a plan that helps guide you sensibly and smartly into the next 20 years, the next 50 years. You can't undo some of those decisions. If you just shrug your shoulders and say, I don't like that guy. I'm going to label good guys. I'm going to label bad guys. I don't like, you know, I don't want to work with so-and-so. I don't want to have that hard conversation. If you just kick that can down the road, then you don't know how you're going to end up. You're going to lose the chance to do it. And those are, 
the consequences of that are really hard to undo. If in 20 years, if, if, if you kick that can down the road for 20 years, then all of a sudden you might end up with a Nosara that nobody recognizes. All right, so that all makes sense. No one here wants this place to turn into Tamarindo or Hako. We're all scared of that. But the manner in which we handle not turning into Tamarindo or Hako yeah. is vastly different. Um, Nosara right now, in a way, kind of feels like the states did. I was there during election year. Uh, or right around the election time, and it was horrible. You couldn't he say one thing without igniting something. And no, sorry, we've always bickered. We've always done what probably every small town does. But lately, it's gotten a little more intense, uh, a lot more intense, actually. And it seems like the parties who are all fighting, they think they're miles apart. They're not, at least in my opinion, because I've sat right here and listened to everybody over this whole thing. I actually don't think people are too terribly far apart. I think the manner in which they do it or get from A to Z is vastly different. And then the ego comes in and then the opinions come in and this community says this and then it turns into that. And next thing you know, mm -hmm. we have protests out in the street and all types of crazy stuff's going on. So you guys keep saying unification and, <laughs> and communication. We're less united and communicating less than Maybe, maybe less than ever on some key yeah. areas. So what do we do? Well, I would say when you speak of unification, I'd be careful not to assume that you can achieve perfect unification. But instead, you can find real progress in just finding the overlap of your interests. If you were to draw a Venn diagram to overlap what I care about, what you care about, and what three other people care about, we can spend all of our time focusing, focusing on our differences that we don't agree on. Or we could actually look at that map and say, we agree on this, this, and this. And if we operate on those things and maybe check our baggage at the door for a little while, put those other things aside for a little while, we know we have to deal with them. They're real things. We don't get to kick that can down the road forever, as I said. But for now, let's focus on these and we'll take a positive step forward. And it's not perfection, but it's a positive step forward. And then let's meet again in two months and take another positive step forward. That adds up. That's real incremental change. That steers your community in the direction you want to go rather than the direction that you just end up because these forces are out of your control and we were too angry to deal with it with each other. Now that's starting to make sense. Now I'm starting to get the... Uh, now I'm starting to understand what you're saying about what the event's doing. Because people are coming up to me and asking, hey, well, what are you doing at the event? All right, well, I'm behind this cause. Let's, I'll go up there and support it. And you guys aren't arguing any causes at this roundtable. Mm -hmm. What you just, I'll try to say it back, what I understood. What you're saying is you have a process to start the communication. And what it requires for it to work is people check some of the opinions and strong stuff at the door just for a snapshot of what do we agree on. Now, what do we disagree on? Stare at it and then take it step by step. Is that mm -hmm. what's yeah, happening? Yeah, that's right. And no, Sereno, one of the things that we've heard time and time again, it's a completely legitimate perspective. Nosara is unique. Nosara is unique. Let's. How do we keep Nosara weird? You know, Nosara is unique, but every community in the world feels unique. You know, Nosara is different and, and amazing in so many ways. But there are a lot of communities around the world that are facing similar dynamics, similar challenges, and we should learn lessons from them. We shouldn't say we're unique. We can't learn anything from anybody else. That's just not a, a scientific approach to things. All we're here to do is to try to bring a process that helps take take one step forward that's positive, and then the next step forward that's positive. So uh, we are going to focus on commonalities rather than differences. In your experience in other towns, have you been able to get people who are decidedly in disagreement and the uh, tensions are up. Have you been able, or have you experienced people being willing to pause to see what you unite on and do it in this format? Or is it normally work out when people are just so polarized and angry about it, you can't get them to connect? It, you know, you can, you can have it both ways. Uh, but yeah, these, these, experiences can result in real good and real change. And sometimes people get frustrated with the pace of change. Like they think there's a 20, uh, there's a magic wand where we can just like fix all of the problems at once. And that's not really how it works anywhere, whether it's going to be here or anywhere else around the world. What you do is to try to take one positive step forward. And, you, and that happens by people being willing to talk to each other. And, you know, there's going to be a general consensus, I expect, that having some sort of sustainable development plan will be a good thing for no, for Nosara. But everybody's going to define sustainable development plan in a different way. And that's fine. We want a sustainable development plan. Okay, what does that mean? 
well, let's ask ourselves, what do we care about? This whole exercise is gauging what do we care about, which would go into, if we can have a statement of shared community values, what a powerful thing that is. In and of itself, it's not a development code. It doesn't have any rules. It doesn't force anybody to do anything or keep anybody from doing anything. It's just a statement of community values. But from that statement of community values, you could have this, maybe you, maybe you come up with a regulation plan, and then you can look back at your statement of values and say, does this fit in that? Is that who we are? Does that reflect our values? You can only do that evaluation if first you ask yourself, what do we care about? That's what this whole exercise is about. Jeez, the statement of values part is, uh, that's an interesting way of looking at it. That's an interesting way of looking at it. All right, well, I've learned a whole lot about what's happening and I um, hope other people do too. I wanna to ask you any predictions you have um, Nosar specific for the event on based on what you've learned from the research and your limited time here thus far. Well, I had a chance to go to uh, the Ostronal refuge the other day and on the sign it says, it's a quote by Gandhi, it says, be the change you want to see. I think that uh, that's telling and, and it's a statement of the kind of values that Nosareños have inherently. And I think they will be willing to come forward and, and, and share that with each other. Right on. All right, we'll see you at the event and we'll circle back afterwards. Um, we'll be excited to see what comes out of it. Great.